So Paul Breach said he was quitting TikTok in his last video, but it seems that that lasted long and he's back again. So everyone rejoice. Whether it's drama, controversy, or just being a bit of a creep, he's always up for it in AR old Paul. Most recently he's been caught being his usual self on TikTok, scaring the local population, fishing for compliments from the younger generation, and in a very brilliant turn of events, getting his dogs out on the internet. <laughs> Free. Let me show you this and more because it seems that Paul Breach just can't stop. So hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. I'm Jake Baz. We cover the weird and wonderful on the internet. And today I'm going to be breaking my Paul Breach virginity. Uh, not, not like that. I just mean it's the first time I've personally covered him. So we're going to have to go down that rabbit hole. If you aren't aware of him, I'm afraid to tell you how odd this person is this 43-year-old man on TikTok Live. He seems to run around the entirety of the UK with a phone in his hand, doing TikTok dances, spreading positive vibes, and also messaging uh, fans that are a couple of generations down the family tree, if you uh, know what I mean. In my eyes, he is the definition of a weirdo. Just a quick reminder of the type of guy that we're going to be dealing with today. So I hope you understand he is a hot, sexy man. I feel so ill. So firstly, he said that he'd quit on his TikTok and that lasted about 24 hours. So let's see this horror show unfold. But first, if you enjoy the video, please do hit the like and sub. I'd love to see you back. And I'm just putting this off, honestly. <laughs> You really are treating us today, Paul, aren't you? This guy really does seem to have the most romantic dances possible. He's showing a side to himself with them hips that I was very much unaware of. The confidence is just seeping through here and, well, the dogs are just staring at me through that camera lens. I I'm really struggling to look anywhere but there. Do you guys think that this is intentional, the reason that he's putting his feet out there? Because I think it is. As we'll discuss later, he does seem to have a tendency to scout for girls. It's the little sink for me you know just looking into your eyes late at night tell me all of your secrets to be honest paul i didn't want to stay at your crotch for the last 10 seconds of the video but i don't really think you gave me an option here did you and i definitely think it's intentional that he's getting his feet out there into this wide world but quite frankly i don't really understand anyone that would be interested in that it's Definitely not a thing for me. So we had some jigs, some wags, and uh, we get to see a pair of jeans, which uh, I think were blue in about 1990. And you all have to admit, it's a pretty brilliant return video. He's been gone for the longest time ever, 48 hours. And you've got to make sure it's a big one, don't you? And I couldn't have thought of anything more sensual. But you might be asking, Jake, why did he actually end up going away in the first place? And well, the reason why is because he seemed to be getting dogged on and probably not in the way that he likes it. But the reason why is because uh, a massive, massive YouTuber, Penguin Zero, Moist Critical, don't know if you've heard of him, massive US TikTok and YouTuber, out of the blue, he decided to post a video on Paul Breach, which was really out of the ordinary, and it really took me by surprise. But this video ended up getting millions of views, and it brought a lot of people to the attention of Paul Breach, and that ended up making him probably think, oh, and then shit his pants. Because people started to realise, once again, the type of person that he is. Because if you haven't noticed from these past two clips, uh, he's a tiny bit odd. But luckily for us, he did a nine minute TikTok video on it, uh, which I'm not going to show you all of it, obviously. I don't think we've got the time for that. But yeah, let's have a look. Firstly, I apologise for the length of this video. Secondly, if it's my last video, it's my last video. Who knows? Who on earth knows? Uh, I'm going to debunk all or the majority or whatever I can remember of the weird accusations I have made against me for the last God knows how long. Um, so prepare to listen. Some of you won't believe it anyway. He's looking like he spent a night behind the back of the concert with Snoop Dogg. And he seems a little down in the dumps. And I believe the reason why he's down in the dumps is because of all the stuff that he's done. We'll go for it. Right, first one. No, I never knew the family of the mother of my child. Wow. Also, no, she was not a ridiculous age when we started speaking. We worked together. Wow. Two Doing the moral high ground and going, wow. 
to everything is it's not really selling your case, is it? I'm not sure what the first bit had to do with anything, quite frankly. But he also seems to have dismissed the fact that he was uh, with someone who was very much younger than him. Because he gave a perfect age, did he? He said... We work together. Oh, wait, that's not an age. All right, uh, well, how old was she then? I've seen a lot of stuff on the internet around it, and I believe that it's either you were 26 and she was 16, or you were 27 and she was 17. Which, considering the way that you present yourself on the platform and some of the stuff I'll show later, that makes a lot of sense. Because there seems to be a little bit of a pattern that emerges in your life. Also, just to mention that the uh, legal age is 16 in the UK. So everything that he did at the time or has done previously, it's all above board. But does that make it right? No, it doesn't. Just because you're not going to get put on trial, it doesn't mean it's not fucking odd. But it's fine, Paul. If you want any advice, maybe go ask Buggy2988 or Keemstar. They'll be able to point you in the right direction for future. Another one, no, did not get kicked out my father's house. No, I chose to leave because you guys who make up these ridiculous stories were making their lives hell by sending posts to the house, getting people to turn up. People were going all over the place. Yeah, you guys, and then getting involved trying to speak to my family members. Did you do that? Yes, you did do that. Weirdly why, I don't have a clue why, but it's stuff that you decided for fun. And that bit to me is actually quite bad. I do feel sorry for him in that sense. Uh, nobody should be going up to uh, family members, things like that, about the way that they act on online. Uh, maybe in a sense of the TikTok dances, but finding out the address, going there, sending stuff, uh, trying to knock on the door, that that's just grim. That's something that nobody should do ever to anyone. There's many other avenues that you can go down to get someone off a platform. And the main one is holding them to account. Let's get on to the... There's an email from a school saying about Paul Breach the TikTok, asking people about pictures. Yeah, funny that. I didn't leave a hotel that I was in up there for three days. So if you could safely and honestly and truthfully explain to me how I could be in a hotel for three days, which the hotel has confirmed I never left, apart from to pop out the door, get a delivery order and pop back in, how I could be in a park a mile and a half or three miles away? So yeah, that's probably right. Uh, but how have you been proven to be in an apartment for three days well, who would go through three days worth of footage just to prove a point like that i'm not sure which side this is on but i'm smelling porkies emails contacted hotels so maybe you do something like that because yeah i was in that area but no i was nowhere near a park i was in a hotel for three days solid so hi also, I find it so funny that you continuously say I don't speak to anybody when I'm doing live chats. When I look up and say about the Instagram thing, WhatsApp, iMessenger. Yet, you then all make up and spread around a rumour that I've planned to phone people or meet people. So which one is it when you say I'm not speaking to anybody? But when That is such a reach. It's actually embarrassing. I barely speak to people on live, so... I can't be messaging them behind the back scene and, and trying to meet up with them. Why would I do that? Such obvious lies like that. That is such a lie. It, oh. We all know that you're messaging people behind the scenes because there's plenty of evidence to prove that. Just because you're a bit boring or live and you just like to talk about yourself because y you are quite clearly quite self-obsessed. Don't mean you're trying to go behind the doors and uh, do some handshakes with people. These things happening, but there are just rumours that you, in your world in your little group, spread around continuously, day in, day out, for other people to feed off and believe in. Some of you are naive and join in because you don't know. Some of you are just doing it because you like a laugh and it's fun and games to you. But you see, though, Paul, it's not the fact that you are doing this with uh, people who are under the age. I actually haven't seen any of that uh, and I don't think I've seen people talk about any of that either. It's that little distinction of, of age. So uh, I, I've seen 16, I've seen 17, I've seen 18, which when you're a 43-year-old man, it's just a little bit odd, that's all. It's, it's really weird. And uh, unfortunately, the people that are younger uh, are quite naive in that they don't know better because they've not gained that life experience. He's done this before, and I bet he'll do it again, where he mentions the under part behind that. Well, no, that's not the point. Just because it's legal, it doesn't mean it's morally reprehensible. The grass ain't looking green. There's people on this app who like me. There's people outside that I meet all day, every day that like me. Yes, there's a minority of you that really don't like me. There's a few who don't like me because they just believe whatever they're fed on here. So if you just take an instant dislike, 
your option you can choose to do that cheers we'll be doing so yeah this entire like i'm quitting video it seems to be a random like ramble and it seems to go on the entire way through uh, specifically to a certain group of people. And I really hope I'm not one of them now, because uh, I don't want to be on his hit list. And also, loads of people that like it, mm, we'll, we'll get back to that. So it seems to be a very gracious ending. Definitely a gracious ending. He definitely cleared everything up, didn't he? And because he managed to handle this situation so perfectly, I think it gave him a bit of confidence, because he ended up coming back on live 48 hours later. I spoke to a 20-year-old outside who asked for a photo. We had a little conversation. Little conversation maybe over five minutes. Nobody stopped us. Nobody stopped us. Nobody came to her rescue. Nobody pushed out the way and went, stop, you're double her age. Stop talking. He's losing his marbles, isn't he? You can talk to 20 year olds in that way, Paul. Nobody, nobody is stopping you, but it doesn't mean it's not a little bit weird, all right? Like I said, Keemstar will tell you everything about that. Also, the way he's flailing his arms everywhere. I, I just, I, I love the performance. He must have done drama in GCSEs, which... Bear in mind, about 25 years ago, so he's a little bit rusty, but... Stop talking to her. She's in the hut tree. Protect the angels. Not one fucker. Shocking, I know. <laughs> Not one fucker. And then goes into the... It's so cringe. So cringe. Change world in which we fucking live. Hi, guys. Um, don't get affected by me. Okay, okay. no, but I who cares? <laughs> you care. I know you care. But honestly, I'm here. I'm here for here. And if I'm not here, then you understand. To me, that seems like he's baiting a certain mental health problem. We'll get onto that. If you need help, always seek help immediately. Don't go into a TikTok live. Bait the fact that you're not feeling very well in the hopes that people will give you sympathy and send you direct messages, etc, etc. When you consider that the majority of his fans are very young because it's that exact type of demographic, you don't want to be trauma dumping on people that are even not in the adult world yet. And if they were in the adult world, unless it's someone like me who's a sad loser... Uh, they wouldn't be watching this. I'm Paul. Like me, like me. Don't like me, don't like me. I don't give a shit either way. I'm so I will like you, like you, not like you, like you, like you, like you. Like Obviously, that conflicts with what he did three days ago where he was on a nine minute rant about what people think about you, whether they like you or not. But uh, all right, all right, Mr. Paul. Maybe you're right. His life's really had changed, and uh, I just don't know why. He decided to quit and come back. I probably know why, because the majority of people like this, they love that kind of attention and fame that it brings to them. Whether it's a good or bad thing, and in Paul's case, it's a... Can you decide, is it a good or bad thing? Personally, I'd rather drag my balls through broken glass, but uh, who am I to tell? So his return to live seems to have been like very exciting and the best ever, but uh, actually he seems to also be giving some advice on his lives, uh, giving people that are the younger generation a way to grow up in the world. With his long experience of dating being 43 years old, he's got some very good points. A 43 year old, wildly wordly advice from moi to you, people who are just starting out, the people who are talking about meeting someone who they love, fancy, or just wanna connect with in a mutually beneficial way. Uh, here we go, number one, when you meet them for the first time, they don't run away, it's a big sign. <laughs> What the fuck? If you do meet them, they don't run away. Kind of shows the relationships that he's been in the past because uh, I've never had someone just fully run away from me. I've been through periods of my life where I thought I've looked a little bit odd, but I've never looked that odd. What could he possibly be doing to get them to actually run away from him? <laughs> Please, men and women, uh, this shouldn't be your first experience when you're trying to get in the dating game. Not going to work out, okay? That's a good sign of this day. They've not run going to start off well on that line two part two if they cry it's also no offense to you it might not have started on the best foot forward um so that's two brilliant tips so it don't if they don't cry after they don't run away from you uh, that's probably a good sign how repulsive must he smell part three if you've met them in the morgue it's going to be a very quiet relationship all right, so... Th Surely he has to be baiting here. This, this, <laughs> this has to be a joke. Maybe that's why he's putting on this weird voice. But also, just another tip, just to counteract what he said. Uh, don't try and meet someone in a morgue. It'd be a bit of a dead relationship. Um, part four. Part four. If they look like your mum, I'm going to say no. Just no. Just no. No. Multiple facets of the word no. 
No. If they look like your dad, I mean, that's a different ballpark. I'm not on that subject. Brilliant. But if they look like your mum, they cry, they run away, or you met them in the morgue, gonna say it's a non-starter. It's great being 43 and giving advice. I hope it helps some of you. So I'm glad you all know now, uh, if they don't run away, they don't cry, you don't meet them in a morgue, and they don't look like your mum, or maybe your dad, if they do look like your dad, that's fine. Uh, now you know how to date people. Even though it's obviously a joke, it's just weird, isn't it? It's just a bit of an odd one. Considering his dating advice is so good, it'd lead you to think that, well, he'll act on that. But uh, as you'll see here, I think he's uh, gone down a bit of a rabbit hole that he can't get out of. No, Latoya's my friend. I'm live on our account. <laughs> yeah, where's Latoya? Uh, she's not with me right now, but how do you know her? To TikTok. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. But you're using her account? Yeah, because I'm banned on my main. Fair play, that's trusting of her. There's some up there, isn't there? That's trusting of her. Mm. Don't start panicking, Paul. Don't start panicking. So essentially, yeah, this random girl is on her mate's live, and coincidentally... Paul was trying to get with her, on TikTok Live at least, but it seems like uh, a little bit more has been going on behind the scenes. Goodness me. Um, how old are you? I'm 18. 18, you're Latoya's friend, and she's giving you a count. Yeah. That's fantastic. Can you do that if her agency? I check. <laughs> Why are you looking so worried, Paul? That's a bit of a weird one. The way your face is going is sending me a little bit. Did you intact Jack? But for certain. Yeah. I would definitely check just check. Anyways. I'm bear with bear with bear. I don't know what that person. Uh yeah. So that's a little bit weird, isn't it? The second he realizes that or oh, there's someone else on her TikTok account, uh, and it's not the person that you were looking for, he starts panicking. Why would you panic, Paul? Is it potentially that there's something in the DMs that she can easily access because she's on the account? I'd check, though. I'd check. I Personally, I'd check your DMs. In no means am I saying that's what's happened, but uh, considering he ended the live, I... I mean, it's a little bit odd, isn't it? And also getting so defensive about this uh, this girl being on her mate's account when uh, Paul has been on live with her before. Ooh, it's a bit of a sticky one. I really do think this is to do with the messages, but, mm, well, I guess we'll never know. Also, around the same time that this happened, he posted uh, three things on his TikTok account. Just a snippet of idea. I've always said to I'd be polite and welcoming. All I ask is for the same respect back. I remember being told this never happens and that is a lie. And there are plenty more from today that people haven't sent me. I'm not saying it's a lie by any means. You clearly do get people come up to you and meet you, but uh, it seems to be a bit of an outlier. And also to me, it's very obvious that they're not going to act very weird around you potentially because of the fact that oh well i'm not gonna go up to someone in the street that's random technically to me and insult them you are a bit of a tiktok creep and because people come up to you it doesn't mean that they'll like you maybe just look at your cameo requests and realize the amount of people that are doing it for this sort of weirdness you're an oddball you wouldn't catch me going up to him uh i I'd rather run away. I'd take his dating advice, rule number one. But I mean, yesterday is one example of your approachability. Paul Breach spotted a live back after talking to his calculator app. Green, green grass, blue, blue sun. I don't feel like on the day like. Maybe he's just getting a bit shy because it's a woman. But he clearly looks a little bit nervous, doesn't he? Bless his little cotton socks. But also, just for future reference of people trying to do this, uh, don't go up to someone in the street point at them in the face and go, Paul Breach! Maybe be a little bit more polite how you approach people. I then found one as well where they're all going up to him and talking to him, uh, and I think he thinks it's a photo, bless him. Can you see green, green grass? I'm not seeing green, green grass. Oh! You're not going to sing green, green grass. My day's ruined. It's quite obvious people telling you to sing green, green grass, uh, probably aren't the best friends with you. I don't think they like you because of your personality. I, I don't think they like you, but it just seems to be this figure that just roams around the streets, walks around random places. He's always there. He's quite sentient. Maybe he's God. Maybe he's God. He does seem to have this aura and pull and... That seems to be translated into public uh, from TikTok, uh, but in obviously all the wrong ways because uh, a lot of people just think he's this odd character. But for some reason, he doesn't seem to have that pull on Instagram because this is from a couple of days ago and uh, he's got 10 viewers. So these three guys are right. Are there three guys? Two. 
Um. Look at how fucking shy he went when he realised that she's having men around. And yeah, he's bad. Oh, that's such a shame. He's lost out. Uh, there's plenty more fish in the sea, um, and hopefully they're around your age. It's just weird, isn't it? Being this dancing act on TikTok, and then also being a bit of a weirdo on TikTok Live. And following it to Insta, uh, it makes it a bit easier for you, doesn't it? It's all right, Paul. You've got the dog in you, trust me. Shortly after this as well, he was caught for, uh, well, it seems that he was trying to get a couple of compliments off of someone who was uh, a generation younger. It's not out of the norm, is it? Let's be honest. They're saying that I'm dating you when I'm not. God, yeah, we're married, we've moved in together, you're flying over to Egypt tomorrow. But get, get to the first point. You like my voice. Thank you, guys. It's an incredible voice. To be honest, I'd fall in love with my voice. To be honest, guys, I would fall in madly in love with this very well-spoken English man. To be honest, it is an incredible voice. So, hey. I can kind of tell that you'd fall in love with your own voice. Not sure about anyone else, though. Bit weird. Take the positives. <laughs> Your face. Yeah, but in this case, it's the negative because they're telling me that I'm dating you. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely a negative. Uh, I don't know you, but I, I feel really sorry for you if you're in that situation. The fact he's gassing himself up and then she just immediately shoots him down. Poor guy. Poor guy. Can only wonder what's going on in his head right now. Um, yes, but we're not. Because we've just spoken about your boyfriend. Oh, erotic readings. I did say that. I've got a voice for it, to be honest. I've got an incredible voice for my voice. You can just do what you want over there. I could literally fall in love with me for my voice. That's dating. <laughs> we are. Well, we talk on TikTok, on the live stream. <laughs> Charging it up, you know? Oh my God, it's so cringe. Like, <laughs> I can't, I can't. Well, no, I know I'm not dating you. I was, or like, even though I'm not, and even if I was, I would not be dating this man. Bugging. But he has got a really nice voice. <laughs> He's trying his best. He's trying his best. It's not coming out. On your story? Who? Me. Did you, Did you post see? On you follow me. Are you on my story? You you follow me. Has it appeared? How amazing is my voice? Um, <laughs> you get to hear this voice and I will talk to you nicely and politely in a beautiful English accent. How do, you, how do you personally feel about these comments saying that I'm dating you? How do I personally feel about these comments? I find them laughable. I have asked you in front of everybody, politely, how your boyfriend is, and to describe him to me of how you asked each other out. <laughs> it's just the constant, like, flipping up like it's so weird like I, i've not seen anyone like him on a platform it, it boggles the mind but he is really really trying and she's really really pushing it off and i feel like she's actually kind of baiting him a little bit trying to bait him in how do you feel about it well uh i, I think we all know what he feels about it i know i've got a nice voice Ava, is my voice nice just listen to my voice all the time it is so peaceful relaxing just an incredible experience is my voice calm? <laughs> uh, what? Is my voice <laughs> calming? Is it a nice calming voice? It brings nothing. I can't do any more of that. I don't know if the voice thing is why he keeps going for it and peddling for it, but it's just so weird. I love the brass neck of it to just ignore it. Just ignore it. Just try and be quiet with it, but he keeps going, bashing, bashing, bashing. How many times, man? If you get let down once, I'd usually just let's say fair leave it alone go away but i feel like he has that inability on tiktok live to uh push himself forward uh and not ignore the fact that oh you're being violated y you are being silently violated what do you guys think of his voice put it down in the comments i'd love to see it personally there's a bit of an attraction there for me but um i like older men that was a joke that that was a joke okay i'm not getting myself in trouble over this but all this negativity that happens to him uh it doesn't deter him it doesn't deter him because he ends up actually uh being a little bit upshot about it and decides he wants to start flexing isn't my ex like 10 years younger than me oh, i know flex um <laughs> <laughs> just what a weirdo man his ex at the time was like i said i believe 17 and he was 27 which 
is very weird. Totally legal, not gonna get in any trouble for it, but it doesn't mean that it's not so weird. And to call the entire thing a flex and then do a cheeky little dance afterwards, just creepy. If he's this kind of person in public, I can only imagine what he's like behind closed doors. And he can go on his platforms and talk about how that's totally fine and yeah, it's totally fine, like we said, but it's morally not right. And then it's also the fact that we've seen on multiple occasions him hanging around these similar ages. Uh, meanwhile, he's 15 years older now. He's 43. It's just such a creepy dynamic. I don't like it. No. And now, I'm really sorry, but I have to bring the tone down, so... Uh, he went on live a couple of days ago and he was deciding to bait out uh, mental health problems. Um, I, I don't know why he did it, maybe for attention, but also just in the fact to maybe project that he is not very well. Uh, and it's worth you seeing. With awareness, I think it's stupid shit. And then I want to, um, yeah, so I'll... But who knows? So as I say, if I'm here, I'm here. If I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> Obviously, we all need to stay in check with our mental health. It's something that's really important to me and to everyone it really should be. But I understand that Paul has this thing where he does it multiple times. Like, he baits out this uh, problem that's going on mentally. And if that's the case, uh, go and get help. I mean, he said in other videos, I don't want help, um, but you need it because... You're on a platform that's public, you're going to be seen by so many people, and the majority of people that will actually be watching the, you, that, like, enjoy you, they are going to be young children. So, the idea that you can bring this on a platform and just bring the tone down um, and it, even joke about these things and then go with a silly little de fucking dance, it's embarrassing. Like, no, no, go get help. Burdening others can be a bad thing if they don't want it, and especially burdening children that are watching your live streams as you do these silly dances. It's really bad. It's a really bad precedent to set. Everyone deals with it differently, you're right, but there's a way that you should go about it instead of going on a platform like this and doing something like this. I'm just not up to speaking. If I'm here, I'm here. If I'm not, you know what's going on. I'm aware well of my moods, my ups, my downs. Things will get better. I don't think they will. So yeah, just continuing to push this rhetoric of, oh, well, I can't, I can't be helped. You can be helped. Things will get better from here. But potentially the main reason why you will get better is when you're off the platform. He definitely does feed from the people in his chat that he hasn't muted because he mutes almost everyone. Um, and it's it's a bit weird to feed off their energy and then when you're in a down period to bring everyone down where you're just saying, no, can't help, can't help me, can't help me, can't help me. Rush to my DMs. A bit weird. This is a public appeal to you Paul to uh, not do anything like this on social media and just go straight to a mental health facility and get checked out. No matter how many silly little dances that you can do on the platform, it doesn't mean that you, you need to go and get checked out. Like, there, there is, you could be better, life can be better, but it probably stops with you being a social media influencer because it's quite clear that you're not built for that. Really, for me, Paul Breach seems to be this very odd character on TikTok that constantly does these sort of scandals of him uh, messaging younger people, uh, not necessarily people that are of age, but wrong, bouncing up and down on the platform, just being very odd. And like I said about the critical video, really weird that that got published. Uh, it was totally out of the blue, but he seems to have made a full return from that. And he's getting a lot more attention now than he was uh, a couple of weeks back where he was pulling 10 viewers on an Instagram live. Paul really needs to sit down with himself, uh, stop all the twerking on social media and come to the conclusion as to what am I actually doing on this platform? What what am I achieving? Because to me, it seems like there's an ulterior motive, but uh, let's not get into that. I hope he finally gets the compliments he deserves, and yeah, hopefully uh, we will see less of him on TikTok Live. Uh, but do get help. Do get help, Paul, please. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. Would love to see you back. I've been Jake Baz, and I'll see you later. Take care.